When I was a little kid, my sister learned that if she just accused me of doing whatever it is she just did, she would never get in trouble. Right? Like if she stole my garbage pail kids and then I found out, she'd run to my mom and say, Mom, Noah stole my garbage pail kids. And then when I said the same thing, my mom's too confused to punish anybody or more likely, she'd just look at the two of us, see that my little sister had really cute dimples and assume that I was the guilty party. And I get a little bit older, I had a boss who employed the exact same tactic. He and I would often wind up on assignment together, just the two of us, and he was the laziest, non-comatose human you will ever fucking see. But when he reported back to the boss, he would say that I was lazy. Then when we come back and we've only got one person's worth of sales, it looks like he's the one kicking all the ass. And of course, if I do the end run to tell the boss that he's not doing anything, it just turns into the same knot that my mother couldn't untie. And, make matters worse, my boss at the time had cute dimples too. Now, as far as I know, there's no word for this tactic. There's no word that I can find that means preemptively accusing someone else of doing the thing that you did in an effort to deflect blame later. Of course, if I'm overlooking one and you know what it is, by all means, send it my way. But if I'm right and nobody's gotten around to it, I'd like to propose a neologism. We could call this religioning. I mean, consider the extent to which religion employs this opposite day bullshit. Right? If you replace unevidenced religious claims with genuine scientific curricula in the schools, they'll accuse you of indoctrination. If you insist that they follow the same laws as everybody else, they'll accuse you of persecution. If you call them out on their anti-gay hate speech, they'll accuse you of intolerance. I mean, consider this one, right? This is a huge one. Think about how much time religions spend talking about the importance of the family. They're all about the family this and the family that. We got to protect the family, keep the family together, yada, yada, yada. And now think about all the people you know who have shit relationships with their family. Just tally them up in your head as you think about it. Think about the people that you know who have issues with their parents or their siblings or whatever and ask yourself what lies at the heart of that conflict. Now, sure, there will be plenty of secular shit in there. There will be some political stuff. There will be some prejudices. There will be some, like, my brother fucked my ex-wife kind of stuff. But if you're anything like me, the vast majority of people that you know who have family members they are completely estranged from or they have crazy strained relationships with, they got there for religious reasons. You know, they say that the family that prays together stays together, but they leave out the second part about how that's only because they'll disown you if you stop praying. Religion is antithetical to family unity, and yet with no hint of irony, religious leaders will claim that it not only promotes family unity, but it's necessary to ensure it. I mean, even if you set aside the doctrines of excommunication, disfellowship, shunning, all that shit, you're still left with a mountain of dysfunction for the churches to answer for. You know, I know that even in my personal life, I'd love to be able to share my successes with my mother. You know, when we won the podcast award, I wanted to tell her about it, but I couldn't do so without ruining all the Thanksgivings and Christmases between now and her funeral. And my sob story here is pretty small fucking potatoes compared to the shit I've come across in emails from listeners or in conversations with friends. In fact, I had a perfect example of this just the other day. Turns out that the guy painting my new house is an atheist, right? So I got to chatting with him a bit, and he's telling me about his wife's family. Now, she's an atheist, the, the wife is, but she comes from a staunchly evangelical family, and they take their religion at least seriously enough that she's not willing to tell them that she no longer believes in it. You know, she fakes religiosity to maintain a relationship with her family. How often have we seen that? Her husband, on the other hand, does not fake it, right? So he's telling me about how they keep him at arm's length and actually say stuff like, you're such a nice boy, I don't understand why you won't accept Christ's love, as though being a nice person and belonging to the religion are intrinsically linked and we should all know that. They're actually telling him straight out, I'd like you more if you were Christian, and they see nothing wrong with that. You know, he even says to him, what if I lied? Would you trust me more if I lied to you and pretended to believe in God? And it doesn't matter how they answer because of fucking course they would. If you lie to your religious family members, they will deem you as more trustworthy. That is, Islam is the religion of peace levels of opposite day. That is opposing gay adoption for the sake of the children levels of religioning. In fact, this concept of religioning is so ubiquitous that I started wondering if it didn't represent an actual mental malfunction of some sort, right? Like something got stuck into their brains the wrong way round or something. And maybe that's been the source of all these issues we've had with communication this whole time, right? Maybe it's just that religious people mean the exact opposite of what they say all the time. Think about how much more sense every religious claim you've ever heard would suddenly make, right? And I'll admit that I'm probably wrong here, but just in case, I want to offer up the following opposite day message in hopes of finally getting through to our religious co-earthlings. All right, it goes like this. <clears throat> My dearest religious people whose ideas I respect, fuck on with your factual truths. 
Your intellectually defensible claims in no way torture children or rip apart families, and your tolerance of all people isn't ruining society. And while I don't have your attention, I should subtract that shoving that Bible down your ass would not be the best use for it. It isn't filled with out-of-date detrimental calls for hatred and violence, and it doesn't act as a direct barrier to scientific understand overstanding. Damn, this isn't tougher than I didn't think it wouldn't be. Anyway, as I wasn't saying, your religion is necessary, useful, and smart. And first but not most, fuck me for all the misery you haven't unleashed on the world.